Okay, so good morning and welcome to everybody. It's a sunny and wonderful June the 20th, uh, 2021. And we are here for the service call entitled Roots into the Ground, Connecting with the Earth. And we will begin with an opening song entitled 389, Gathered Here, played by Steve Bell. Gathered here in the mystery of the hour, gathered here in one strong body, gathered here in the struggle and the power, spirit draw near. Gathered here in the mystery of the hour, gathered here in one strong body, gathered here in the struggle and the power, spirit draw near. Gathered here in the mystery of the hour, gathered here in one strong body, gathered here in the struggle and the power, spirit draw near. So, good morning. At the beginning of a Westwood service, whether in person or online, we pause to affirm the land where we gather has borne witness to thousands of years of Indigenous history, culture, and spirituality, and continues to do so. Amiskawehen, the Cree name for Edmonton, meaning Beaver Hills House, is Treaty 6 territory and a traditional gathering place and a home to diverse Indigenous peoples, including the Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, Dakota Sioux, Iroquois, Dene, Ojibwe, Sotu, Anishinaabe, Inuit, and many others. I acknowledge my role as a treaty person and feel continuously called to explore what that means and how to be a responsible and respectful ally. I encourage each of you to seek understanding and how to be curious and respectful allies and treaty people. So welcome to Westwood Unitarian Congregation. I, uh, Westwood um, Congregation is one of the many uh, Unitarian, con Unitarian Universalist congregations in the province in this in the country and in the world and one of the things that um, i just want to acknowledge today is a special day in many things today is father's day so to all of you who are fathers out there uh we remember you and uh the support that you gave us it's also uh we're on the verge of solstice and uh commemoration of aboriginal day um, I'm your service leader. My name is Lee Bourne. Our speaker this morning is the Reverend Ann Barker. Our musicians this morning are Steve Bell and Rebecca Patterson. And our technical support people are Ilara Stefaniak Cadet and Bill Lee. Our chalice lighting this morning is words by Richard Wagamese from the book Embers, One Ojibwe's Meditation, and I'll be reading from it uh, throughout the service. If you have a chalice or a candle that you want to bring forward, we invite you to light together with us. Here are Richard Wagamese's words. I am my silence. I am not the busyness of my thoughts or the daily rhythm of my actions. I am not the stuff that constitutes my world. I am not my talk. I am not my actions. I am my silence. I am the consciousness that perceives all these things. When I go to my consciousness, to that great pool of silence that observes the intricacies of my life, I am aware that I am me. 
I take a little time each day to sit in silence so that I can move outward in balance into the great clamor of living. So we light our shared chalices this morning in the spirit of silence. And let's sit for just a minute before we move on and find our center. So I would ask and have the congregation join us in joys and concerns. You can type them into the chat and we will uh, have Steve Bell provide us with uh, his musical uh, meditation to answer in, to answer the peacock. all 
um, all joys and concerns not uh, written or spoken at this time. We will sing happy birthday for all those lovely people that are having birthdays in June and possibly July, August, throughout the summertime. You get a chance to sing with everybody. So Dennis is one of our happy people who's having a birthday even today. So let's uh, sing happy birthday with Rebecca. affirmation for the candles that we have lit so everyone can join in the affirmation and please uh, speak it now affirmation may the light of these candles inspire us to use our power to heal and not to harm to help and not to hinder to serve the spirit of truth in loving affection and trusting hope and now we'll have a musical affirmation with Rebecca. And this is our offertory song. From you I receive to you I give. From you I receive to you I give. Together we share. And from this we live. Together I receive. Thank you, Lee. Today is one of those intersections where so many things are going on. It's Father's Day with all of the feelings that that can bring. And it's the final formal service of our church year. Tomorrow is the summer solstice and National Indigenous Peoples Day. And it's my last day of work before I take summer leave a leave that will be extended into September since I will exchange my second knee in mid-July. Next Sunday, we begin summer services and in 11 days, our province will be declared open for summer and COVID restrictions will be lifted. It feels like a lot. Does it feel like a lot for you? So let's slow it down. Let's not try to make any big strides this morning and let's not try to accomplish anything. Instead, like our opening words, let's take a little time to sit in silence so that later we can move outward in balance. So this is a slow Sunday. Summer solstice, the slow, and constant motion of the planet. Indigenous Peoples Day, the connection to place, to tradition, and to ceremony. Long days of sunlight, plants in the garden, pots on the balcony, bushes along the riverbank, trees reaching high up to the sun and deep down into the ground for sustenance. Where is our sustenance? When we put our roots down into the ground, what do we reach? There is such a powerful eloquence in silence, Wagamese writes. 
true genius is knowing when to say nothing to allow the experience, the moment itself, to carry the message, to say what needs to be said. Words are less important, less effective than feeling. When you can sit in perfect silence with someone, you truly know how to communicate. In May, at the Canadian Unitarian Council Conference, I went to hear the elders speak. Elder Sharon Jinkerson Brass from the Musqueam Reserve offered a teaching in one of the workshop times centered on reconciliation with the world. I didn't know what to expect, and I was delighted by so many things. The first was, she was the only one to speak. So often we get so busy trying to learn new things and fix things and do things that we are all talking and we quit listening. That can definitely happen to me. There is so much to talk about and it's exciting to be with other people at a conference who share our principles and our interests and our convictions in the world. For a blessed, beautiful hour, Elder Sharon offered her wisdom to us. Wisdom about connection with the earth, about finding our own right medicine, about ritual and ceremony, and about ancestors. There was no planning or hatching or accomplishing going on. Just listening and gentle speech stories from which we could draw our own conclusions and with no rush to get there. I am so grateful for the times I get to sit in silence in the presence of wisdom. So there are two things I'll share with you from that hour, little things, because her stories are not my stories to tell but two small things that seemed so perfect for this moment, I offer them to you to draw your own nourishment from. One of the beautiful images that the elder offered up multiple times over that session and throughout the weekend was her understanding that, and these are her words, the stars are the campfires of our ancestors, sacred wisdom as a canopy above us. The stars are the campfires of our ancestors, sacred wisdom as a canopy above us. In this time of rising energy, the shifting of the pandemic and the easing of the restrictions, this time when we all wanna be done with it, and we wanna see our families and gather with our friends and we wanna get back to normal and yet it is not normal. And there is no one answer, no one right way to move forward. Isn't it comforting to think that the stars are the campfires of our ancestors and sacred wisdom is a canopy above us. I could use some sacred wisdom. When I'm unsure of the next move and struggling with choices, it can be so grounding to imagine what would my grandmother have done in this situation? Or how would my father have handled this? And when none of the ancestors that I have met seem to offer the wisdom that I need, I could reach back further, centuries back, and draw on a different wisdom. To look up into the beautiful summer night sky and feel connected to light years of experience. We're all star stuff, after all. Is such a peaceful, centering idea. And how is it different from any other way of remembering, of connecting, 
of situating ourselves within the story and the legacy of time. One gift is that it's grounded in nature. The sky, the stars are always with us, even when we can't see them. We know that they're there, patterns of light in the sky, rhythms and cycles and eternity of being. What a beautiful touchstone and what a beautiful gift. The stars are the campfires of our ancestors. Sacred wisdom as a canopy above us. Now, in the description of this service, you were invited to bring items that represent or symbolize your connection to nature. So if you have something you've brought with you, I invite you to just hold it in your hands and sit with it, just be with it. And if you don't have something close at hand, take this moment to close your eyes and imagine what connects you to nature and sit with that image, just be with it. And it might help you to cup your hands in your lap as if you were holding that idea. We'll sit in silence for a minute. If you want to show people in your window what you've brought with you as your connection to nature, I invite you to hold it up now. All kinds of different things. And if you're holding something in your imagination, that's beautiful too. Wagamis writes, my spiritual father once told me nothing in the universe ever grew from the outside in. I like that. It keeps me grounded. It reminds me to be less concerned with outside answers and more focused on the questions inside. It's the quest for those answers that will lead me to the highest possible version of myself. I get this feeling when I walk into the Mutart Temperate Pyramid, when I smell the West Coast trees and the greens and grays of moss and lichens, the umami earthiness of the rich, dark soil, the damp in the air, and I feel transported to my roots. My roots are near the ocean, in sight of the mountains, where you often can't see the ancestors' campfires for the heavy socked in ceiling of stormy gray gloom. But you always know that the stars are there and it won't be long before they peek through again. And the world is always, always green. Always green. In those memories with the whoosh of the tides rocking me back and forth, I find myself easily aligned with the wisdom of my ancestors and their nonsense, but mostly their gifts and the lessons that continue to shape me layer after layer and wave after wave. How do you connect with nature? Where are your roots at home? What do your wings reach for? What in the natural world soothes your heart, feeds your spirit, sparks your imagination? 
If you would like to share your connections with nature in the chat, you are welcome to. I won't read your names, but I may read a few of the offerings aloud. And I'm going to read those questions again to help you. While, and while you're typing, we're going to play a story read by one of my favorite people. The Reverend Emily Gage is a minister at Unity Temple in Chicago. And it's a Frank Lloyd Wright building that has been lovingly restored in recent years. Emily was my field advisor while I attended seminary at Meadville Lombard in Chicago. And I just love to share my favorite people with you. And she's talking about one of my favorite natural things. So here's the questions again. How do you connect with nature? Where are your roots at home? What do your rings, wings reach for? What in the natural world soothes your heart, feeds your spirit, sparks your imagination? Basically, how do you connect with nature? So you're welcome to share in the chat. This story is for everyone who loves to blow dandelion puffs. It's called Dandelions by Katrina McKelvey and Kiralee Lonergan. Stop, I yell, running outside. I'm too late. What's wrong, Dad asks. I was waiting for those dandelion flowers to turn into puffballs so I could blow them away. They're just weeds, Dad replies. Not to me, I cry. I love dandelions. The fuzziness of their petals, how they're yellow like the sun. They're magical. Dad sits down beside me. You look like you're waiting for something, he says. I am. Even though you mowed my favorite flowers, they'll come back. I just have to wait now. Dad sighs. I'm sorry I cut your flowers, sweetheart. But follow me. I know something that will cheer you up. You're lucky I didn't pull them out earlier, says Dad. Thanks, Dad. They're beautiful. We take a big, deep breath and blow as hard as we can. We send every tiny parachute spinning up, up, up. We chase them running and panting until they're too high to reach. Exhausted, we flop down on the grass as we watch the, watch the little parachutes. We wonder where they go. Together, we imagine them swirling in the wind as they pass the roses in our front yard. <clears throat> Spinning in the wind through the poppies that line our street. Twisting in the wind over the sunflowers in the park. Whirling in the wind around the weeping willows near the river. Turning in the wind under the oak tree canopy is just out of town. Twirling in the wind between hot air balloons bobbing above the countryside and floating up so high that they're collected by the sun. Maybe that's why dandelion flowers are yellow. Where do they really go, Dad? I ask. After the wind has finished playing with them, they're sprinkled all over the place. Some new soon new leaves appear, new flowers bloom, and new puffballs grow. Look around. Oh, Dad, now that is magic. So let's read some of those things in the chat. And I'm just going to grab some, so don't, um, I'm not picking and choosing, just grabbing every third one or something. So walking along a rocky ocean shore, the huge ever-changing prairie sky and the intimacy of the woods, Coyote Lake. I go for walks on the river valley to connect with nature. I love taking pictures of nature hanging out with the bees and crows in our garden, picking berries and cloud watching, and cat snuggling. One of the important ways I connect with nature is when I'm skiing alone in quiet areas, the woods are very quiet with a heavy blanket of snow. My roots are in two places, my backyard and the Bay of Fundy in Nova Scotia. 
stormy skies, the sunlight on the trees when the sky is dark, dark, dark. Hot pink sunrises. Walking by and meditating by and on the river throughout the seasons. Second treasure that I wrote down from the conference with, um, with Elder Sharon, and I wrote it down word for word so I'd get it right, was this. Colonization makes us not trust the intuitive or spiritual world, not letting in or trusting a visitor from the spirit world. The more busy or distracted that we are, the more worried we get, the more we're focused on a problem rather than sitting with the question, the harder it is to hear the answers. The more commercial we get, the more talkative we are, the more we think we know the right answer. Ouch, that's definitely one of my challenges. Then the further we get from the quiet openness that Wagamis is encouraging us toward. Colonization makes us not trust the intuitive or spiritual world, not letting in or trusting a visitor from the spirit world. Whatever we think we believe about visitors or spirits, there is no denying that nature is where the magic happens. Where the unbelievable sunrise is laid out right before us, just daring us to deny its sacred beauty where the hints line up one after the other until we pay attention, where life's persistence and determination are demonstrated over and over and over again, even in the most inhospitable circumstances, where truth can be both consistent and changeable, sometimes defying all understanding. Wagamese writes, me, what is the purpose of ceremony? Old woman, to lead you to yourself. Me, how? Old woman, by giving you an idea of who you want to be and then allowing you to create the experience of being that way. Me, which ceremony is best then? Old woman, life. Choose what leads you to the highest vision you can have of yourself and then choose what allows you to express that. What you express, you experience. What you experience, you are. Me, how do I prepare? Old woman, breathe. As we go into the summer, into the opening, into these uncertain times, may we be solidly planted in nature, connected to the earth, drawing on the wisdom of ancestors, trusting our own intuition, planting acorns for those who would sit beneath oak trees long after we are gone. May we be safe and well until we are together again. May we all know peace and love. May we remember to breathe. Blessed be and amen.
one of my favorite music recordings of our whole time that we've been online. Thank you, Rebecca, for that. So we will end where we began with Richard Wagamese from Embers, one Ojibwe's meditations. I am my silence. I am not the busyness of my thoughts or the daily rhythm of my actions. I am not the stuff that constitutes my world. I am not my talk. I am not my actions. I am my silence. I am the consciousness that perceives all these things. When I go to my consciousness, to that great pool of silence that observes the intricacies of my life, I am aware that I am me. I take a little time each day to sit in silence so that I can move outward in balance into the great clamor of living. So if you have a candle lit, now is the time when we extinguish our flames, even as we continue to carry the message with us, when the flame has gone out, we remember to sit in silence and may we remember to breathe. Blessed be. And now we sing our final song, 1067, Mother Earth, Beloved Garden, played by Steve Bell. This is our closing song for today. everybody for joining us this morning. Uh, next week is our first summer serendipity service and then starting in July it will be the summer worship collaboration amongst four congregations who um, there are unique links every Sunday so please go to the calendar and get the link to the service. Sometimes we're going to Saskatoon, sometimes to Kelowna, sometimes um, to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton, sometimes to Westwood, and the first service Westwood is hosting is a real treat. 
It is a service recording from Halifax where they had Peter Mayer come in, Peter Mayer of Blue Boat Home. Um, and he will sing and perform Blue Boat Home. And it is really just filled with music. And the Halifax congregation and Peter Mayer has gifted it to us to be able to share with you. So the July 4th service, it will not be recorded because we don't own it. So um, it's a be there or miss the magic kind of moment. But all kinds of great things are going to happen. Um, yeah, I just can't wait. I'm so thrilled that congregations are working together over the summer.